All right, before we talk about what made Ronald Acuna so special movement-wise this year, we're going to talk about some of the really impressive numbers he put up and some things I thought were very intriguing, and that apply to some of his swing changes. So his K percentage dropped this year by 12%. It went down to 11%. He struck out 11% of the time this year while hitting the most extra base hits of his career. That's amazing by itself right there. His average launch angle is down to 7.4 degrees. It's down from 12 degrees last year. His max exit velocity increase over four miles an hour hit a ball 121.2 miles an hour this guy's a buck 95 guys that's super super impressive now another intriguing stat um, that i looked up is ronald acuna hit 278 ground balls this year this is the uh, 2023 Ronald Acuna. This is the 2022 Ronald Acuna. This is the GOAT. This is a very good player. This is the GOAT. This is a good player. So his swing and miss percentage dropped by 7%. Um, what does that tell us? Okay. What does all this information tell us? So he had a, his K rate dropped. He had a bunch of ground balls and he swung and missed less. But he had the best year of his career and his max exit velo jumped. It tells me by Ronald Acuna trying to stay on top top of the baseball he struck out less and he hit for more power okay so by him trying to stay on top of the ball he was able to give himself more chances for failure he caught a lot more barrels by doing this okay now let's get into some of the movements that i believe helped ronald so much so the reoccurring theme here is going to be balance the removal of slack aka the separation move and then launching against that separation or that tension that you've created i call it launching against the resistance so let's move into it let's talk about some of the stance changes ronald has made so far so we can see that the handset is definitely lower actually let's go right here yeah so the handset is definitely lower so in 2022 the hands are higher 2023 the hands are lower what this is going to do is relax his shoulders some more guys the shoulders are definitely going to be more tense the higher the hands are it's not a guarantee that you're going to have tight shoulders but the lower the hands are the less the shoulders have to support the hands if we can get the shoulders out of the swing guys then we gain so many capabilities that we wouldn't have you know without with having our shoulders tense if our shoulders are tense and they're driving the swing we lose our direction that means we lose our power and adjustability through the middle of the field which means you're going to suck at baseball i've been there trust me you don't want to be there the next thing um, that we notice is the barrel angle is slightly different. The barrel is slightly more wrapped than before, whereas Ronald Acuna is very, very, very famous and very well known for kind of laying the bat back like this. This year, he's a bit more upright, okay? The next thing that we can notice is one of my favorite things, and it's in the stance, all right? So I think that his weight is 60-40 on the front side. Notice that the front foot is slightly different. Instead of just being square, being straight up, his front leg is internally rotated rotated, closed off. Juan Soto will do the same thing. Front leg will be internally rotated like this. This is going to give the hips a natural coil. So he's not going to have to think about it. The coil is somewhat taken care of in the setup. Now, the reason why I bring up the fact that his weight is 60-40 on the front side is because there, there's a video of Ronald Acuna doing a step back and he was able to add the step back in his stance without actually stepping back. It's so, so cool um, that he was able to do this. I've seen a few other guys do it um, as well. So now let's get into the loading action. Let's get into what really starts to, to make the difference. So we notice that he has a different stance and this different stance is gonna lead to a different load. And how does this apply to you guys? How does this apply? How does all this information about Ronda Cunha apply to you guys? This is what I'm trying to tell you. The stance is very, very important. He was the GOAT this year. He was a good player this year. His stance is a lot more relaxed and upright. The stance is going to play into a lot of things because the stance leads into the next move, which is the loading move. We know that the swing is a chain reaction, so we have to start off in a good position to, to launch that chain reaction. If we start off in a compromised position, then our entire chain is gonna be sent, uh, spent compensating, uh, making up for things that we did not create in the load. So guys, the swing starts in the load. The swing is nothing but the stance and the load. The swing is a result of the formula you put in. The formula is the stance and the load. So instead of trying to change your swing, change your stance and load, and that's when you're going to start getting some, uh, some changes. So let's talk about this load. All right. The first thing that Ronnie's going to do is shift forward slightly. Watch him shift forward onto his front side just a little bit. And we're gonna notice that his back foot is not all the way in the ground. So he's starting 60-40 like this, and when it's time to move, he is then getting back into the back foot, right? It's gonna replicate a step back. So if I were to step back, 
for a moment, my back would be weightless and then I'm into it. And that's part of the reason why it helps me. It helps me work into the ground without getting stuck and keeping my torso in a good position. That's why the step back helps so much. Now, Ronnie did the same thing this year by putting more weight on his front side. So by the time he came up and he was ready to lift his leg, he was mimicking a step back. Now, aside from the um, weight distribution part, Ronald's leg lift is slightly different this year. So pay attention to his front knee. He's gonna pick up his leg under his center of mass. What this is gonna help him do is keep his torso neutral. We don't want the torso dumping or rocking to any side. Most kids mess up when they lift their leg because as soon as they lift their leg, they rock like this. They let the torso go over the legs now I'm outside of my frame, I'm leaning back, and I think that I'm, I think that I'm loaded because my weight, weight is back, but I'm really just tricking myself because all I can do is spin out of that position. All right, so now let's watch the front foot we were just talking about. Oop, a little too fast there. Our front knee, picking it up under the center of mass. Now notice how little the torso shifts. Notice that his torso, or that his shoulders are slightly down here, right? Let's go through it slightly down as opposed to here, right? Now on this side, he's on top of the hip. This side, he is in the hip with maintaining the integrity of the middle. This is why on the right, he did this on this side, Ronnie did that. I probably could have done a big, uh, better job of picking up my leg under me, but you guys get the point. Okay. Now, as he starts to progress forward, what this is going to allow him to do, now that he is neutral, he is able to, his torso, his center of mass is able to move, move forward more freely, okay? When the torso is back, it cannot move forward more freely and it's gonna be stuck back. So this is where the magic really starts to happen, the pullback. We are pulling back against our weight, guys. Our weight is our best friend. So if we can get our center of mass moving forward, we can pull back against it. It's the bow and arrow concept. The reason why the bow the reason why you can pull the strings back on a bow is because a bow is a stiff and rigid structure that gives the bow that gives a string something to pull on. Now, we understand the bow and arrow effect in the swing, and we know that we, we want to stretch it and release it and everything. But if we were to pull back the bow, we just wouldn't pull back from one side. We take both sides and we separate, right? We, Ronald Acuna is doing the same thing here. So the bow in this instance is the middle of the body and a center of mass is going to work forward while everything up top is going to pull and resist this forward. Now notice how much further his center of mass travels forward. So he's using his weight to pull back against it. That is why this guy is getting every ounce out of his body is because he's using his weight. He's using the heaviest thing. What is the heaviest thing? It is our torso guys. It's not our arms. It's not our legs. It's this big mass right here. We have to get this going forward so we can pull back against it so we get our bow and arrow effect. So in this instance, or in all instances, the bow is gonna be the middle of the body. The strings, in a sense, are gonna be the arms or gonna be the elbows, right? They're gonna pretty much stay there, work, feel like they work back a tick, but the middle and the, the center of the, or, or the middle of the body is gonna work forward so you can stretch against your front side. And now we're in what I call the hangman position. It almost looks like the front shoulder is going into his neck right here. It almost looks unnatural and uncomfortable. This is something you're gonna see. It's very common with Ken Griffey. Um, big time power hitter, one of the greatest of all time. This stuff works not because these guys are special athletes, it's because they are doing, they are abiding by the principles of hitting. They're getting to a max stretch spot and unloading from there, okay? Just because Ronald Acuna is an exceptional athlete does not mean you can get off, you, you cannot get off these same moves. You can get off the same moves. You might not hit a ball 121 miles an hour, but I can guarantee you, you're gonna maximize what you're capable of. And in this game of baseball, and really in anything you do in life, that's all you can ask for yourself, is maximize what you are given. Maximize what you have. That's what I'm all about. Okay, so let's get into the launching against the resistance. Launching against the resistance is the last key to a really, really good swing. So he's created this great load. He's removed all the slack from this position. Removing the slack, this is exactly what removing the slack is. See all the wrinkles? Everything is pulled back and he's ready to go. The slack has been removed. So as soon as he goes, if, as soon as the torso goes, there's no lag. It's not boom, boom, it's one piece because I'm pulled back and ready to go. It's not 
two pieces because there's no slack. We're pulled back, we remove the slack so we can go. All right. Now let's talk about launching against the resistance that we have created. Okay, so the shoulder is rock solid. Once you've loaded the, the front shoulder into, into this position, it doesn't move. Think about this. If you were my target, I'm not actually gonna shoot you, this is just for the sake of the example, but if you were my target, I wanted to shoot you, right? Let's put this down. I'd aim my sights at you and pull my trigger, right? I wouldn't aim my sights at you and then do that and then pull the trigger. It makes no sense, I'd never hit my target. So why would I do the same thing when I swing? When I load, this front shoulder is my sights, just like this, and I'm leaving it on my target. Everything's gonna fire, boom, while my front shoulder is staying on my target. This is gonna keep my stretch in place, uh, allow me to stretch in place, and it's gonna hold my direction going through the middle of the field. If my front shoulder goes with my rotation, I'm shooting my bullet over there, I'm shooting my hands over there, I have no power or adjustability through the zone, and I might as well just walk back to the dugout, okay? So, now that we've gotten the front shoulder spiel out of the way, front shoulder is there, locked down in place. Oh, uh, let's get right here. It's messing up a little bit. Okay, ooh, oh, that's crazy. That is crazy, okay. Perfect frame to stop at. Front shoulder has not moved. As you can see here, this front shoulder is starting to work up and back a little bit. This front shoulder's work is rock solid. It's not moving. Every, the scap, elbow, hip, core, all of this is pulling down this way, down this way while the front arm is working independently. The front arm works independently because it must stay closed against your rotation. That's how you can rotate and stay closed. So you can deliver a powerful blow through the ball, but still get everything behind the ball. If the front arm leaks like this, I cannot rotate. I'm gonna rotate open. But if the front arm stays closed, the front shoulder stays closed, I can rotate closed and deliver a powerful blow going through the baseball with my weight behind the baseball, with my body behind the baseball. That's what we want. That's where the power is. And now he's in that max stretch position and then once you launch against the resistance, resistance guys, all you have to do, every, all, of this, all of this is on autopilot. All you have to do is hold your direction going through the middle of the field. Now, it is my opinion that this guy on the screen has the best direction ever. Best direction ever. The reason why I say that is because his highest exit velos are to center field. There's nobody that I've seen in the game like that. He hit a ball 121 miles, miles an hour to center field. You might have a Giancarlo Stanton, but this guy is 195 pounds and doesn't lift weights, okay? He doesn't lift weights and he can produce this kind of stuff because he's getting his body into some special positions. He's leveraging his body against itself, catapulting the hands into the zone and creating tons and tons of power. And we see that expressed in, in exit velo guys now let's go to ronald's step back video that i was referring to earlier and let's play this through for you guys a few times i'll play it through one more time all right sweet all right so we can notice some really really cool stuff here and i'm going to tell you how this step back just it changed this guy, it changed this guy, it changed this guy. Okay, so he steps back. Pay attention to the torso in relation to the legs. You will never see the torso get outside of the frame of the legs. He steps back, the torso stays centered, and he, he lands, he never breaks back, he never breaks forward, he keeps the torso in the middle even during his stretch move. Well, that's part of the reason he's able to stretch so well. So look at that. Torso staying stacked in the middle. Hands starting to work back like he does his thing. Classic Ronald Acuna separation move. He's in the hangman position right here. That's beautiful. Now, something that, um, that, that is more apparent here than was in the last video. So this front arm is working up, back, and this way. Or it's this way, right? It's working independent of the rest of the body. So it's almost pinned this way, front shoulder staying there, while all of this is gonna work down and through the zone, and it's gonna turn the barrel like that. Boom. Another thing that, that uh, we really need to pay attention to that Ronald Acuna is emphasizing, he's emphasizing his direction through the middle of the field. Now, I just made the comment earlier that he has the best direction of all time, and it's on display. This is why. Look at the emphasis of getting his barrel and his weight through center field. His barrel and his weight through center field. So we know that he's got this 
big stretch move back here, but not only is he stretching a ton back here and he's holding on to it back here, once he launches, he's getting his weight all the way through. He's working through because he knows that at the end of the day, his weight is his best friend. So now let's tie it all together. So Ronald Acuna had better balance this year because he was able to keep his torso in between his feet better. Now this changed everything. It changed his ability for his torso and his center of mass to move forward freely so he can stretch against it. That also gave him the ability to catapult his hands through the zone. And it gave him a bunch of other capabilities in his swing, such as more adjustability. And then his propensity to try and stay on top of the ball gave himself more chances to fail. By him trying to be on top of the ball, he hit way more line drives this year, hit way more extra base hits. He backs him on the ball all over the field, and that's what it means to be the best hitter on the planet. He did it while hitting the ball over 110 miles an hour. He had, he had a more 110 exit velos than anybody in the league this year. He's 195 pounds, 195 pounds. Think about that. We got, we got Judges and Stantons and Otanis. We got all these monsters in the league, and he's competing with them at a way lower body weight. And once again, he doesn't lift weights. So we learned how he stayed balanced more. We learned how he removed slack, how he's able to get the front shoulder under the chin and hold it there. We learned how he's able to hold it there during his launch. He's resisting the front side and the front arm works independently of everything else. This is one way I like to describe it. Take your hand and hold your wrist like this. As you move forward, you're going to try and hang yourself with your front arm. And then once you do that, you're going you're gonna to hold your arm here and then turn against that resistance you've created. This is what's gonna happen. Remember, we gotta keep the torso neutral when we do it. If I lift my foot, I can't let that happen. All right, so we're gonna stay centered, lift, boom, and now launch against it and you can feel it. Now, see how my body is going this way, right? My job is to, once I launch here, I have to hold it. I don't need to go any further because if I remove all the slack, a twitch of the torso swings the bat. Remove the slack so a twitch of the torso swings the bat. Now I hold my direction going through, going through center field.